Welcome to the Dream Life is Real Life podcast with your host, Hannah Hermanson, bringing you real life stories of people who realized their dreams to educate and inspire you to create your legacy of abundance now. Hey, hey, today I'm with Chelsea Reed. As a busy mom of two girls, coffee diehard, and self-awareness and confidence coach from Manitoba, Canada, Chelsea first got into coaching as a business coach for moms who wanted to stay home with their kids. She was passionate about helping busy moms slow down and fulfill their dreams. What she came to realize was how much she really loved just helping women break through limiting beliefs and realize their potential in every aspect of life. So now she owns her own self-awareness and she um, helps people own self-awareness and their deep intuitive feelings um, so that others and herself can fear, let fear go and use trust to make necessary shifts in their life and business. Ooh, this is so juicy, Chelsea. I'm excited. To <laughs> with you. Yeah, me too. Let's do it. Let's talk about it. <laughs> So I want to know a little bit more about your story. So was it like you just woke up one day and you were a business coach or how did, how did this whole journey start for you? Oh boy. Um, let's take it back a couple of years, I guess. Um, you know, I started actually my entrepreneurial journey about six years ago and I started in network marketing. I knew that right out of high school, um, I wasn't meant for the traditional nine to five. I really wanted to be able to design my own life. So um, over a few years, I dipped my toes in a couple of network marketing companies, um, and some of them were amazing, and they had some great um, systems and compensations, but I still felt like I was living out somebody else's dream and working for somebody else's paycheck. So I took a little break from that after having my oldest daughter. Um, I got myself a nine-to-five job that I had been trying so hard to get away from, but it was something my family needed at the time because I became a single mother and I needed some financial security. So um, we did that for about a year and then I got another job as a account manager with a pretty successful logistics firm. And, you know, I punched in, I punched out and I just had this feeling of this isn't it for me. And um, I must have manifested that because about six, <laughs> I was six months pregnant with my youngest at the time. Um, I was actually laid off from the job. There was a shortage of work. And as much as it was stressful, it was also a big sigh of relief for me. It was mm -hmm. kind of that open door for me to uh, figure out what it was that I wanted to do for myself and really go for it. So I spent a lot of time working on my own um, self-awareness and trying to figure out what brought me joy, um, what drained my energy, what filled my energy and really identify, um, what made me feel good. And I realized that, um, I really loved connection and communicating and fostering relationships with people was something that even in my other nine to five jobs was my favorite part of it. So, um, I was working casually for a friend, um, after I had been laid off and one of her clients was a life coach mm -hmm. and she was, um, she actually focused on working with women to, um, get out of the dieting cycle, but so not exactly the, the avenue that I wanted to take, but just the flexibility and the freedom and the ability to design her life and work with women on such an intimate level really appeased to me. So I hired an awesome business coach <laughs> and I got down to starting my own business. And because of the season of my life was so intense um, and I was learning how to create my own freedom, um, I naturally kind of just took to that and wanted to kind of replicate it for other moms just like me. Um, so I didn't wake up a business coach by any means. It kind of, it yeah. was a full fledged process, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I just, I love your story. And I know that so many people listening, including myself can resonate so much with that, like that sleeping giant inside of us. And we mm -hmm. can try to replicate what other people are doing. We can jump into network marketing. We can learn, Oh, she coaches on this or, Oh, <laughs> you know, like people have succeeded doing that. And you know what I admire about your 
journey is that it has been just this continual coming back to what brings you joy. What is your purpose for this era of your life? And so network marketing served a purpose, working nine to five served a purpose, being a business coach served a purpose, but now, you know, you're into this other era of just, um, ownership for women and confidence and clarity. So Mm -hmm. thank you for sharing. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Thank you. A question I know people are probably wondering, and I get a lot, you probably get a lot too, is like that part of your story when you were laid off, but you you were looking for the silver lining and you said you got clear on what brought you joy. How Mm -hmm. did you do that? Um, Well, that is a pretty, for me, it was a big process, especially because I was going through the motions and doing the whole mom thing. Um, I became a mom fairly young. So the things that brought me joy were put on hold for a while. And I think that throughout the process of momming, um, Mm. I kind of lost the idea. Um, I kind of lost the definition of joy for myself personally as an individual woman and not just as a mom. So Mm -hmm. um, it took a lot of me asking myself, what am I doing right now that excites me? Um, What am I doing out of a sense of obligation Um, and figuring out how I can remove those, you know, those obligation things out of the equation to make more room for what actually brought me joy. So for me, I'm like big into journaling. Um, Anybody who knows me, Um, at the end of every day and at the beginning, if I have time to, I really like to jot down what I'm one looking forward to. And then at the end of the day, what made me happy and what part of my day really resonated with me. And it took me doing that for quite a few months to really recognize patterns and Mm. identify that, you know, one of the things that brought me joy consistently every single day was a connection that I made with someone or a conversation that I made with someone, whether it was the ability for me to motivate and inspire them on some level or for them to do that for me. So connection was really something that I realized was um, an everyday thing. And it was the one consistent thing that lit me up regardless of what else was going on finding the patterns. Yeah. And journaling for months is definitely a really intensive, you know, path to that self-awareness. And so I think if you listeners, um, are able to commit to that, some sort of practice, you know, like Chelsea's saying, it's not like she's writing, you know, a memoir every night. It's just like a couple of bullet points. And Mm -hmm. over time, those bullet points can lead you to a lot of clarity. Yeah, absolutely. It's just, um, it also allows you to be more aware. Um, Mm -hmm. So it goes into that whole thing. As soon as you realize that there are patterns, you start noticing them just subconsciously and um, you really start to understand yourself and how you work as a person. And is this the sort of process and strategy that you now coach women on that are in general looking for more confidence and clarity in their life? Or what are, what are you helping clients with these days? Yeah. So, I mean, that's a part of it. Journaling, of course, is something um, that we can add into our day-to-day routine to really gain some clarity around um, what we want, what we enjoy. But what I do now is I work with women, um, motivated millennial women who are ready to um, take it to the next level in life, whether it be in their general life uh, relationships or even in business, um, just creating a higher level of happiness and success by doing the self-awareness work and creating that unshakable confidence that, um, that allows you to make inspired and bold action towards your goals. So, um, helping women identify, you know, their dream life, similar to how you do is, um, identifying what their ideal day looks like, how they would feel, who, who they'd be interacting with, what their day-to-day routine would be, and kind of figuring out what are you doing now that is getting you closer to that goal? And what are you doing that may be holding you back that we can eliminate to make more room for, Mm -hmm. for the good things that are going to bring you to your, to your next level self. Mm -hmm. What, what do you find are like the common conversations or obstacles or even, I don't want to say mistakes, but what are some of those roadblocks that you find women getting caught up on when they try to move towards a new level I think that a lot of it, not, it's not necessarily, um, a a cohesive theme of blocks, but one theme for me that I find when I talk to anybody is just that limiting belief of worthiness. Um, I think that is a big thing that, you know, as women, 
whether it's money, more money that you want or more quality, higher quality relationships, it's this sense of, am I worthy and am I selfish for wanting more? And I think that's something that a lot of us can say has held us back from even vocalizing our desire for more is this sense of, am I worthy and do I deserve and or need more? Mm, yeah. Why can't I just be content? You know, I have a family, I have a job, like yeah, I could be I, fine, but why, why yeah. can't I quiet that sleeping giant? Yeah. I think, I think a lot of us are conditioned. I mean, my, um, my generation, especially from women that I speak to that are kind of in my same age demographic is, um, our parents before us kind of conditioned us to believe that all you need is enough to kind of get by. That is how my parents, I love my parents. They're amazing. And they've always provided for me in the best way possible. But I think that something that they conditioned me to believe was all you need is enough. You know, if you have enough to pay Mm -hmm. the bills, uh, um, you know, you, you have enough to be thankful for. And it is very true. It gave me a really good sense of gratitude growing up and even to this day. But I think that that played a huge role in my feeling guilty for wanting more than just enough. I wanted to thrive. I wanted abundance. I didn't want just enough to survive. Yeah. And I think that's something that a lot of us are conditioned to think as well. Oh, okay, people, I'm going to get really real right now because um, I'm you're, I'm resonating so much. And I'm really curious, you know, I always find that the, the powers and the story and the connection and I just have this like thing in my head that I just feel like I have to share this because uh-huh. Chelsea, you are speaking right to my like soul and many of the things that still hold me back, right? It's the stories about what we've been taught and what other people think we need or don't need. Um, so my mom. Okay. So I just was spending time with her and the same thing, right? Like she's always told me like, Hannah, just slow down. Like you're enough. Like you <laughs> what you have. And like you, I'm like, but I want abundance. So I want more, but I want to be a go-getter. And I want three jobs at a time because I see where this is going to take me in three years, you know? Uh-huh. And we were spending some quote unquote quality time together. Just her and I worked out this past week. Literally this timing is amazing. And we got into, I don't know if it's an argument, a difficult conversation. Okay. We Mm -hmm. got into a difficult conversation and it came down. It was a long process as difficult conversations are, but our conflict that has been coming up year after year, time after time, really, I realized it came down to the fact that we have completely different values and that she straight up told me, she's like, Hannah, you want to move mountains. I want to just like camp at the bottom of the mountain. Like Uh I'm fine just doing my day-to-day things. She's a school social worker. Having kids is her dream. She has me and my brother. She likes going to dinner on Friday night. Like that's what she looks forward to. (laughs) And she's like, and I, this is what makes me happy. Like I have no desire to move mountains and I'm, I'm glad that you do. I just don't relate. I don't resonate with the things you talk about and the things you want me to celebrate and the the stuff you're chasing. And I, have, I've held, you know, I love her and she has provided as well, but you know, I've held a story that she's holding me back or she doesn't get me when really, if we can just identify, we do have a value that, that we want more and it's okay to say, I'm not content with that, or I am content with this. And so maybe this, these stories will, you know, land with other people, but I really invite people to, um, explore the stories that are holding you back. Like you just said, these limiting beliefs, these questions of worthiness. It's like, we mm-hmm. all have different values and we're totally worthy of expressing those. Can you relate yeah. to that, Chelsea? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally can. And like our moms sound like they are cut from the same cloth because my mom's the same <laughs> way. She's worked for a financial institution since before I was born. And She's very comfortable in her, exactly, her, her comfort zone. She has enough. Um, she is a creature of habit and she has her routine and she does her thing and she doesn't really invite discomfort into her life. And, and um, I, I get this from my dad, she says. So my dad yes, is always- Yes, he said the same I, thing. <laughs> <laughs> dad. Oh, man. But, yeah, my dad just has this like- fire under his butt all of the time. And he's always looking for the next new thing to thrill him and a next new way of changing his life and changing the world around him. And he always has these big, big ideas. And my mom and I are actually having a pretty um, intimate conversation the other day. And she says, my parents are separated. So she said to me, you know, one thing I never understood about your dad was 
you know, he, he wanted these big, crazy things. And I never understood how we would one afford them or how we'd make the time for them. And I feel like maybe I held him back in that sense. And I think she's coming to these realizations as she's trying to understand my journey and my desires. And I think that her and I having a conversation about the conditioned beliefs that I have because of, not because of her, but just that she kind of influenced me to believe. Um, she really opened her eyes to that idea and um, mm, was kind of able to make breakthroughs of her own. And we had a really great conversation and she's opening her mind to what I'm doing. And she's definitely a cheerleader of mine, regardless of how much mm-hmm. or how little she understands. But yeah, I definitely, our parents must be very similar. In that I, sense. Well, I love how we're just like literal soul sisters. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. So anyway, though, people like you're going to run into these folks, whether they're your mom or your partner or a random person you meet at a networking event. Like mm-hmm. remember that everyone is operating in their own set of values and in their own story. And the only control you have is your own. And so for so long, I, and I, I know more of Chelsea's story. Okay, we're we're friends on the the backside of the show, as you might be able to tell from the way we chat. Um, but <laughs> for so long, I thought people were trying to hold me back, and oh, they didn't. But like, as, as soon as you like cut that blame and that energy of one like worrying about, you know, if other people think you're worthy, or if other people like your idea, or if they resonate with you, like, you just gotta let that go because it's yeah. going to happen. And Uh the only option is to just focus on your own energy. So Chelsea, now that we're getting super real here, I want (laughs) to, you know, moms are, moms are one relationship that we need to navigate, but I want to turn to another relationship that I know that you talk to your clients a lot about. And, um, you know, you and I are both navigating is like, how do you move to a new level when you have a partner or a spouse or a co-parent or, you know, uh, how do how do you navigate that yeah. sort of personal relationship? Um, if you don't mind going there, I will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind going there. And my situation is probably a great example to share because when I first, um, shared with my boyfriend that, you know, I was wanting to get into coaching. I've been spending a lot of time working on myself and getting to know what brings me joy. And this is something that is calling to me. Um, he did not understand at all. He comes from um, a very old school background. His parents both had great jobs. Um, you know, they did their time, put in for their pensions, all of that stuff, and mm-hmm. did really, really well. And they did everything kind of by the book. And I, if anybody who knows me personally, I'm very off the book. <laughs> I don't follow um, by any. She's writing her own journal, literally. <laughs> yeah. That is the book. Yeah. She- yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So he was very um, wary. You know, he's got a great job. He works for the railway. He makes good, good money. He's got a pension. He's put in his time. He's unionized, all of that stuff. So, and he's very comfortable with that. And it took him a really long time to even open his eyes to the possibility of um, coaching, bringing me one income, security, all of that stuff. But even my personal development was something that really confused him. Um, Mm -hmm. I I just don't think that it was a a world he had ever really opened his mind to. And we actually recently met with a couple um, from our gym who are both entrepreneurs. We sat down, we had coffee, we talked and, and um, the gentleman shared a book that he had read, which was actually rich dad, poor dad. Mm. And, my boyfriend kind of turned over to me and he said, Oh, maybe I need to start reading these books. And I just, <laughs> my jaw dropped to the yes. floor and I said, yes, drink the Kool-Aid. Read mm-hmm. the book. Mm-hmm. But it was really hard. It took a yeah. toll on our relationship because I wanted to spend time working on me versus watching big brother or all of the shows that he was into. And, um, it was really, it was hard on our relationship at first because we, re- I really had to, um, open myself up. And I felt like I wasn't being heard at first, Mm -hmm. but he eventually came around. So, I mean, if anybody is having that same struggle, (laughs) um, I'm telling you, eventually they do come around. They just have to have a realization of their own, just like we did. 
Boom. Okay. That is exactly what I have come to found, find as well, whether it's my parents or my partner. It's like at the beginning of my journey, I was trying to explain to everyone, like, look at what I'm doing. Like I have all these things. Like, do you know, I change people's lives. Like, come on. You know, like I really like tried to explain and I would share with them all this stuff. And it was just, you know, like they just glossed over and again, worried about my health care and like only had questions about how much money I make and if I'm okay. <laughs> and so I just, again, I stopped that story that I need to explain or blame or, you know, prove myself in some way. Yeah. And my boyfriend at the time uh, was a middle school teacher and I started the same sort of thing. You know, they have, so they both had these set mindsets of like you work and you get paid and like you save for retirement. Like that's how you live. Yeah. And so we're living together and I'm starting to do all these things. And um, we would, at the beginning we'd go out and people would be like, Oh, so what does Hannah do? It's like, Oh, she like teaches yoga. She's still trying to figure it out. You know, she's, she just moved here. She's just figuring it out. I was like, in my head, I was like, no, I own a business. And like, I coach people, but I let it go. And it came to be after a while, just like being in my purpose and like having an energy. He started asking like, so what are your clients achieving? And like, what did you actually do today? And it's amazing to see when they have their own entrance, right? Like I couldn't force Mm -hmm. him in the door. He had to start asking questions and then coming to workshops with me he was a photographer at first, but now he just sometimes comes because <laughs> he wants to yeah. learn about whatever you know topic we're talking about. And so yeah. I just, I love that you share that same wisdom of like, just let people find their way into your journey because forcing them or proving it, um, they just like both of us, probably we had to have our own entry to, to this lifestyle. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It just, it takes that moment of aha for everybody and it comes in different phases and different times. And um, actually just a couple of weeks ago was the first time when we were having a conversation with someone that Rick, um, they asked me what I do and Rick piped up and shared right away. He like cut me. It's a huge cut turning point. Yeah. I was like, Oh my God, my heart. Like that was, <laughs> that's so kind of you. You acknowledged my journey. You acknowledged what I'm doing. And now he, He's, um, you know, kind of taking it in with me. So we made a goal. We're going to Mexico next week and we're hitting up the bookstore prior and we're going to each choose out a book that we're going to read together on our trip. And it's just a great way to create a new connection between the two of us too. So when your partner gets on board, it, it really is a fascinating and amazing feeling. Okay. Now I'm like having that, like, oh my God, my heart. (laughs) Okay. I I kind of just want to like put it out there. So when Chelsea mentioned, you know, she's, she started this journey. She hired a business coach that happened to be me. And so (laughs) people to watch this journey of yes, like now you're, you're out there, you're doing the work, you're in your flow and your people are coming. And, um, so, oh, okay. I'm loving this conversation. And I just want to um, touch on one last topic before we start to wrap up because we could chit chat all day here. Um, yeah. what it really is like helping people understand like why, and I know this is really your area of expertise and your specialty is like, why is confidence so important? Like what does it help us achieve if we become mm-hmm. more confident? So one of the things that for me, um, confidence has provided me with, and I think um, is a universal thing, but having confidence in, is another sense of having trust in yourself. You know, you're able to navigate these scary situations knowing that no matter mm. the things that it has provided me with, um, and it just allows me to walk through any situation with my head held high, knowing that good or bad, um, I'm going to survive. I'm going to be okay. And I'm going to come out knowing more and I'm going to come out stronger from the situation. So that ultimately is what confidence is for me. It is just knowing that regardless of what happens, you are okay. Yeah. You know, I always think about it as like education. It's one of those things that people can't can never be taken away from you. You know, yeah. even a business, you know, that your taxes could rob you <laughs> of the, the business you know, established, that you have established or a partner could embezzle. Mm-hmm. You know, like there's so many things that can be literally taken away from us, even though we think we own it, like Facebook, like a business, like a client, <laughs> all these things. But confidence is one of those things that when you have it, you always have it. You can always tap into it. And so I love that you are talking about the ability just learn a skill set and take it everywhere you go to show up better and more fully 
everywhere you go. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Confidence is universal. You can apply it anywhere. So don't forget that. (laughs) Yes. All right. We're moving into our pop quiz round. I think you know the drill. I just have three (laughs) last questions for you. You ready? Okay. Yeah. Number one, what is one thing, one action listeners can take today that will help them get closer to their dream life? Okay, so I think that one of the most important things you can do is evaluate where you're at right now versus where you want to be um, and deciding who you're going to be surrounding yourself with. That is a massive, massive thing for me. Take a look at who you spend your time with and whether or not their values align with the ultimate values you and your higher self have. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. (sighs) Doing some, uh, yeah, you got to be self-aware in order to be able to select the environment, the people, the energy that you're surrounding yourself with. So yeah. Do they align and do you want to really invite them over for happy hour or do you want to go spend some time with, you know, personal development book tonight? (laughs) Yeah. You bet. bet. Okay. Number two, what is a tangible resource that you want listeners to get their hands on? Like if you could just hand out a gift. A tangible resource. Yeah. (laughs) I got to say, there is one book that has changed the game for me. It is really what pushed my personal development and my own um, self-awareness journey into like full throttle. Um, I'm sure all of the listeners have probably heard of it already and um, maybe even already read it. If not, you need to, but Girl, Wash Your Face by Rachel. That book has changed my life and um, the way I look at everything. So I got to say, I love my girl, Rachel. (laughs) Yeah. You know, what's so crazy. I just saw on her Instagram that it's the book, that book has only been out for one year and I do feel like tons of people have listened to it. So girl, wash your face. Oh yeah. Good stuff. Last question, Chelsea, where can people get in touch with you and learn more about what you do and what you have to offer? Absolutely. So um, I am on Instagram. My Instagram name is Chelsea with an I. So C-H-E-L-S-I-N-A-N-N Reed, R-E-I-D. So Chelsea Ann Reed. (laughs) It's all spelled a little uniquely. Um, And then my website is ChelseaReadCoaching.com. There you can find a little bit about me, um, some pictures of my family probably, and uh, a little bit more about the services that I do offer. And I'm also on Facebook. So you can find me just at Chelsea Ann. And um, if you'd like to join, I have an amazing group of inspiring women. Um, am I allowed to swear on here, Hannah? <laughs> yeah, don't worry. Okay. As as my kids, kids won't are... repeat it. I don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully people with kids aren't listening when their kids are around. But my Facebook group is called Confident as Fuck, and it is a group of amazing women who share their stories um, and aspirations and really pump each other up and just create a safe environment to share your big ideas and your big dreams. Um, so I'd love for you guys to join. I've got tons of free resources in there. Every Thursday, I actually hop on live and I do a little segment called Caffeine and Confidence, where we talk a little bit about confidence and all things self-awareness. So for a little bit more about me and what I do, you can tune in and learn there. Yeah. Okay. So find Chelsea Ann Reed, Chelsea Reed. We're going to make sure those links are um, connected here, but you guys, I hope you can hear Chelsea is a real inspiring, authentic uh, female leader and entrepreneur, and she is confident AF, but she's also real AF. So <laughs> please reach out to her, find her on these places and get involved because again, pretty much everything you're doing depends on your ability to show up confidently. So yeah. Chelsea, thank you so much for taking time to be here. As always, it's a delight to connect with you. And listeners, I will be back next week with another inspiring guest that will help you make your dream life your real life. Until then. (laughs) Bye. Thanks, Anna. You've been learning how to make your dream life your real life with Hannah Hermanson. To get the resources mentioned on today's show and to listen to past episodes, visit www.dreamlifeisreallife.com.